Welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Terry Hunter. I'm an intuitive astrologer, and I'm here to talk about tomorrow's full moon in Aquarius at 11.31 a.m. Pacific time. A full moon is where the sun and the moon are in an opposition, and the earth is located between the sun and the moon. And the sun is reflecting in such a way where the moon is fully um, illuminated and reflecting that light back to earth. I think this is really important because in astrology, the sun is how we project ourselves out. It's the light that we project out into the world. It's the, um, in many ways, it, along with our rising sign, it is how we are projecting and being perceived out into the physical world. Now, the moon represents on our interior world, the things that aren't obvious to the outside. And these are the things that, that we keep close to our heart. As we humans look out at the moon, we only ever see one side of the moon. The dark side of the moon, we never see. And that also um, feels like it has something that relates to our emotional bodies. So while certain emotions are seen by people, um, we can see happiness, sometimes we even see anger. Oftentimes we do not see what is the underbelly, the underbelly emotion that started the whole cycle. I hope I'm making sense because a person who is angry is oftentimes maybe angry at a situation or at a dynamic, but there could be a something underneath that that has been brewing and has been um, cultivated that stokes that emotion. So the reason I'm bringing all this up is because the sign of Aquarius is rebellious by nature. It is, there is the potential that, that during this full moon, uh, things could be illuminated that actually bring up a bit of disruption, but that disruption will oftentimes lead to more balance. Um, and I think what we're, or what I'm trying to do is bring a certain amount of awareness so we can start to look at these disruptions and reframe them. So we can start to see disruption could be a divine tool that leads me closer and closer to my dreams, to the things I want to experience. So um, this full moon in Aquarius, let me just back up and talk a little bit more about what Aquarius represents. Aquarius is the 11th house. If we look at the number 11, it is the master number of thought. And when I say mastering, I don't mean I've got control over my thoughts. I am aware of them. And in that awareness, I can shift my focus. So there's the mastery. There's also Aquarius rules genius, uh, being of genius, thinking outside the box, which very much plays to the idea of the 11th house and the number 11 being a master number of thought. Aquarius rules the future and the future we cannot see. The future is something that we, we project out, things that we want. It also is where humans think outside the box, where invention lies, where technology is advanced, where we explore new and different things. And oftentimes in order to explore those things, a certain amount of uh, traditional structure gets broken up. So here during this full moon in Aquarius at nine degrees, I think the ninth degree is reflecting where some of this divine disruption will come in. It will come in in the form of Sagittarius, what Sagittarius represents. And Sagittarius, to me, it's sextiles, the house is sextile Aquarius. And so there is a commonality because they're broad thoughts. It's philosophy. Sagittarius rules our ideologies. It rules our our education at a higher level, meaning not just the things that have us operate um, on the human level, but take us into new um, thoughts, new broadens us, expands us and our beliefs. So I be, what I believe is happening during this full moon is an illumination that is asking me what I believe now. What is my philosophy? What are my ideologies? I also think at the ninth degree that I get to look at how I'm branding myself on, on the um, 
on the World Wide Web or in my large networks, in my outreach to the world as a potential influencer. This is all coming to play for you as well. Aquarius rules large systems. It rules the World Wide Web. Now we see the ninth degree of Sagittarius ruling expansion and broad thought, moving me into new territories where I'm unfamiliar. So they're very, very complementary. So I think that what's happening here is we are waking up to our own um, thoughts, our own individual assessment and discernment of, of certain things that are being fed to us uh, through the media. The ninth, uh, the ninth degree of Sagittarius rules publishing and marketing and branding and business and commerce. Aquarius right now makes me feel as if I'm going to be liberated from what is being fed to me through marketing dynamics and, and ways that we have been engaging humans into our product and services. I, I think very much about how um, the commercials that we see on TV, the ads, if we look closely, oftentimes they are fear-based, even if they're funny. You know, we've got that uh, insurance company, I can't remember the name of it, where the the uh, spokesperson is mayhem and goes around and, and demonstrates all the ways that we can be, you know, uh, thwarted or hurt or damaged in some way. And that's why we need this insurance to, to secure ourselves. So I think this full moon is illuminating where we are being herded into certain thoughts, behaviors, and dynamics. Aquarius also rules the nervous system. And so oftentimes we see anxiety being associated with, with um, Aquarius. And I think that anxiety is an inner knowing of something being off balance. And as you start to maybe step back a little bit and allow spirit, allow the universe to reveal something, it can um, often... Uh, alleviate or uh, bring solace to that anxiety. Now, this full moon is not making a lot of aspects from my personal assessment, but it is making a square to Jupiter. So um, by nature, this uh, fixed full moon in Aquarius is going to make a square to Taurus, um, a square to um, okay, think for a second. My other fixed sign is Scorpio, and it's going to make an opposition, obviously, to the sun in Leo. So this is all very powerful. But the square to Taurus, to uh, the Taurus house, is also a square to Jupiter. We have Jupiter at 13 degrees, which is a four degree orb. And the 13th degree is very interesting to me because it reduces down to a four. So that was well, the 13th degree is the Aries degree, the Mars degree, a degree of bravery. I also think this is an opportunity to create a new belief system or to start to build on my beliefs in a way that is more solid, uh, that is creating a foundation. Uh, uh, so I think this square um, is, is a tense moment between the version of myself that I'm birthing through Jupiter's transit in Taurus and what I am used to, what I have become accustomed to, and now I get to shift from it. I was watching a commercial yesterday uh, where Coffee Mate was advertising how much uh, less expensive it is to use Coffee Mate than it is to buy, let's say, a Starbucks. What they didn't say is that there are ingredients within Coffee Mate that are absolutely bad for your body. And so you may feel like you're getting a cheaper cup of coffee, but in the long run, you could be spending a lot of money repairing your health. So these are the moments. And I bring this up as an example where we're going to start discerning the information that's coming to us and start to filter what feels and resonates as truth and what is asking us to liberate ourselves to rebel against in some way. Now, let's talk a little bit about the background players that are going on during this illumination of the moon. Um, we have Mars at 13 degrees Virgo trining Jupiter at 13 degrees Taurus. So here Mars is like, I'm double downing on being brave where I've been enslaved, where I have been, you know, 
when I think about it, I have a little bit of a, a morning coffee uh, situation. I've been trying to get off the sauce for a while now, but every morning my body, you know, is used to it and it wants it and it craves it. So this is about being brave and, and about being intentional of shifting a certain habit. Virgo is my health um, and allowing that trying to support my culminating the cycle of my caffeine stuff. Um, we also see Venus. Uh, she's retrograde at 26 degrees and she is making a sextile to uh, the South node at 28 degrees Libra and a trine to the North node at 28 degrees Aries. So here we're seeing this idea of, you know, here's that Aries energy. Here's a supporting cast behind the scenes of the full moon asking me how much do I really uh, value myself? What do I want for myself? Where am I willing to start to rewrite my belief systems and my ideologies and my philosophies? Where am I willing to go into new territories in order to expand what I want in a way that supports the flow of my life, the ease of my life? Jupiter is by nature a, a benevolent. It bestows upon us um more wealth more comfort more sense of a feeling uh, a divine hand on us protecting us from the uh the fears that can can permeate this earthly experience but a part of that is my cooperation and my willingness during this full moon during this cycle where the moon is so bright illuminating something that's out of balance um, and Venus is asking me, talking about my money, talking about my sense of uh, feeling beautiful, using my skills in my partnerships. It's very encompassing, very much like Mercury. And at the same time, during all of this and what's been playing in the background of all of these aspects for quite some time now, months and months, is the nodes squaring Pluto. Pluto in Capricorn asking us to look where authority, where government, where large, you know, companies and large systems like um, coffee made is made by Nestle and Nestle is owned by somebody else. And, and there's all these big companies that profit sometimes from things that are out of balance. So this is an opportunity to really start to dig deep Pluto into my own co-creation and empowerment for what I want in this lifetime and ask myself, what am I willing to do to achieve that? Because that's where Capricorn um, and Saturn co-rules Aquarius. I'm sorry, not Capricorn, but Saturn co-rules Aquarius. Pluto is in Capricorn, breaking up those last few degrees of disempowerment of structures that don't work for us before it moves into Aquarius. So I think this is going to be a very powerful time to begin the process of reflection, of uh, sitting in the present moment and saying, what am I doing in the way of co-creating the ease, the flow of my body, of my mind, of my resources, all the areas within our human experience. Um, I thought it was interesting too, that the day of this full moon in Aquarius is a seven day and we're in a seven year and recently we had seven full moons at the cancer degree of self-nurturing, of, of utilizing my intuitive energy. And I wanna offer intuitive energy like this. If we pay attention to the animal kingdom, everything they do is on energy, is on using that sixth sense to assess a situation, whether it's safe or whether it's time to you know, flee, whether there is food, using, because most animals don't actually speak, they use their other senses at a more, um, in a more consistent manner, which makes them very strong. So there's a part of me with Jupiter in Taurus is like, how can I use the animal instincts that I've been given versus just my, my mouth and my eyes? I feel like trusting a, an inner knowing and starting to really Jupiter rules the connection to the angelic realm and Aquarius rules space and rules 
things that we don't know what, what's out there. I don't know about you personally, but I've never been out to space. I only know what they tell me is out there. And I'm pretty sure there's a lot more out there than even we know and all the scientists, et cetera. So my point here is, is where will you personally give you yourself permission to rewrite your belief system, to align it more to your hopes and dreams. And even if it's going to be a little bit tense in the beginning, if there's, you know, resistance from maybe the people you love or your outside world, there's still an opportunity here as you stay steadfast and have the fortitude to continue to emotionally and spiritually connect to your dreams, then the universe will start to bring in the components that will ask you to walk through a gate after gate after gate towards them through inspired action. So I think this is really powerful. So here we are, we're seeing this illumination of Jupiter. What are my beliefs? Where am I inhibiting my own expansion? Where am I dogmatic in my beliefs? And, and this this tense square is wanting to rewrite the story, wanting to take the old story and use it as the backdrop for a new story. The, you know, everybody, uh, if you look at all the reality shows, they always have a package for the contestants. They want to give the audience a reason to root for the contestants as the contestants have overcome strife and struggle. And this is what I think um, is being offered. And the strife and the struggle is not maybe necessarily in the material world, but in your belief system and how your beliefs have shifted. And, you know, as we shift, not always do people around us shift at the same pace. And sometimes we feel like we're going to be left behind. That's a little bit of the Aquarius energy is to be so futuristic that and so genius that people don't relate to the, the fresh concepts or they can't wrap their head around it. So this is um this is going to be a very subtle and yet powerful for an interior shift. That's what I think is going on here. Now, I was going to go through each sign and house, but I thought that it would be um, important for you to look at the planets you have in Aquarius. I don't have any planets in that house, but I do have Chiron in that house. Now, I have a nine degree Taurus moon. So this full moon is going to square my personal natal moon. Um, and I want to uh, sort of give you the opportunity to look in your charts and to see what planets do you have in the fixed signs and what planets do you have that may sextile or trine this moon and have that support the reconstruction of your life in a way that expands you and allows you to stretch beyond what you have known into a place that really represents an opportunity to invite others to join you in that expansion. So um, I think this is going to be um, interesting also because we start the month with a full moon and we will end the month with a full moon in uh, Pisces uh, because we'll be in Virgo season. So this is very interesting because Pisces is a very dreamy sign. Pisces is very imaginative. And it may be that as you've liberated yourself, as we go through the new cycle of the new moon in Virgo, uh, giving us an opportunity to release the chains that bind us even more succinctly, then we can go into this full moon and start a new cycle of creation and of um, illumination. All right, that's it for me for this new moon. I'm sorry, full moon in Aquarius. If you would like to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell, I'm also available for readings, both angel readings, uh, as well as uh, astrology readings. You can reach out. My information is below in the description. And please join me Sunday mornings live at 11 a.m. Pacific time. That's where we actually do readings by each rising sign. And we get the angels advice for traversing the week ahead's transits. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. Uh, have a lovely week. I'll see you on Sunday. Peace out.